Okay, so I had the Onion Router, or Tor, and essentially Tor is an open source privacy network that allows users to browse the internet anonymously, and it was originally made for the Navy to protect government communications, but now it's open to public use. And essentially how Tor works is it uses something known as an onion technique to transmit data. And this essentially means that when a user opens Tor, uh, they can connect to a website through a Tor network, which will intercept the traffic with like the browser and bounce it off three random servers before passing it to the original like destination. So like where you wanna go, your website. So these are just images that I use to kind of demonstrate uh, what things will be in the following like slides to explain like how the whole onion routing works but essentially the first thing that occurs when you connect to the tor browser is you will find like yourself connecting you'll have to like actively say connect or you can click a like checkbox and it will actively like always connect you as soon as you open the tor browser but it will then receive like your computer will receive a list of tor nodes or like other computers or servers which Tor like has designated to be like bounced off of. Once that occurs you will be shot into the Tor network which will allow you to go into an input node and then you will bounce around to three random computers. It will never be the same it will always be randomized and then the output node will send you to wherever you want to go and that would be your website or like say a hidden service. And then just every single time that you would choose a new website or a new onion address, you would do the exact same process just to reiterate that you know, like your pathing will never be the same. So now the question is why hidden services will operate in Tor. Uh, essentially it's because of the amount of an on like anonymity that is gained from Tor because both the server and the user can remain anonymous to one another. While when you are using like a normal browser such as like Google Chrome or Firefox, the both you, the user and the website know who each other are. And then the, the way that this works is that both, uh, unlike say we connected to Google through Tor, we still know who we're connecting to. Hidden services instead will also themselves go through like a pathing process to make sure they are also anonymous which is why we have something known as like an onion address and to get to this you'll have to go through something known as an introductory point which will basically allow the server to choose whether or not the user is allowed to like visit this onion address and then these are just more images used to like reiterate what the following uh, slides will show so this is step zero. It's step zero because this should have already been done by the hidden service. But uh, the hidden service will create these things known as introductory points with a descriptor for the Tor service to know that it goes back to this in particular server. Now, this like descriptor will just be held in a hash table. I'm not gonna go into all of the um, like data science and whatnot. So that's really all you need to know is that the Tor, well, the hidden service will create multiple inter introductory points. And then that's kind of just reiterated here where you can see that random nodes on the Tor service will have introductory points, which the user can try and access using an onion address. And you must have this onion address to access these hidden services. So what occurs on the user's end is they will open the Tor browser they will go through their normal setup and then we will have something known as a rendezvous point, which is essentially just what we are gonna call what the original output node was. But this time, since we're staying inside of the hidden service, we're going to need to connect over the like Tor network to maintain complete anonymity. So using this, like you'll notice here, unlike the previous slides, there's only three arrows. This is to show that the output node will connect to somewhere else within the Tor service, which will be shown on the next slide. So this yellow line shows that your rendezvous point will communicate with the hidden service over an introductory point. And at this point, the server will 
decide whether or not it would like to meet with the user. This, like, oh, we're going to assume that the server would like to meet with the user. Otherwise, it would just end there. Like, there would be no connection. So assuming they do want to connect, the server will go through a similar process as the user to go through a Tor circuit into the rendezvous point, and they will communicate over a line in the rendezvous point like any other Tor service, where both of them are completely anonymous, but the user can now access the hidden services site. And essentially, the next couple slides will go over like a process on how to set up these hidden services, as well as a secure shell, or like using the Tor service. And this will be done over Ubuntu, which is just a denomination of Linux. So first, you'll obviously need to install Tor. You can either go to their website, or if you are like feeling fancy, you can use Linux commands by uh, just adding the repository and then installing it using like your super user uh, commands, which are shown in option two. And then the HTML web server setup will essentially need you to set up either an Apache 2 or Nijinx, which is just a downloadable HTTP like web server. And then to you would need to make sure that the service is working, which is as simple as putting in HTTP colon slash slash localhost into something like Google Chrome or Firefox. And then if you want to really make sure it works, you can go in and edit the HTML sites like document. So you can do that for the Tor service if you already have the folder for it, which would be the index.html. Oh, so if anyone ever does want to follow through with this. And then you're going to need to edit your Tor C file to have the following lines so that you are actually hosting a like, website over the Tor network. And then to you're going to need to restart Tor just to make sure that this website will actually be hosted. And then to find out your onion address, you can use the command sudo cat var library tor hidden service host name. And then it'll shoot out your host name, which is your onion address. You can put that into the Tor browser, and then you can just connect to your Tor service. The secure shell is essentially following a very similar protocol. It, you're just going to need to edit your Tor C file again. And then you'll put in these following lines to set up another hidden service, which is why it's called other hidden service, over these new ports. Uh, the service port 22 is just like your standard port for a secure shell. And then uh, you're going to have to restart Tor. You're going to follow the same process to find the host name. It should be a different host name unless you did choose to reuse the same service and you no longer have an like, HTML one. And then you will have to connect to it either from the host PC, or you can also connect to it from another PC if they have the key and password uh, using the command torify ssh user at host name, where the user is your user, and then the host name is the onion address that you got from the pseudo cat. And then since my stuff is on a different laptop, I have a video showing how to essentially connect to both services. At first, I was thinking about showing the Tor C document, but then I figured I, it would be better off if I just showed how to get to the host names and then uh, what the websites look like. So that's the host name to the uh, what's HTML onion address. So this should just be a testing site because it's not going to be anything super fancy because the main thing was creating this tour like setup. And then there's the testing website. 
And then the same command, except for in another hidden service is used to find the host name of our secure shell. And then we'll use this command to connect to it. And once that command is in, I will demonstrate what happens when the password is incorrect and then what is uh, supposed to happen when whoever like tries to access it does have access to it. And then it takes like a bit just because uh, when you do connect over a Tor circuit, it's it, it can shoot you all around the world. It's not like specific to country, so it's not the fastest. You're giving up speed for anonymous. So that's what happens if it's wrong. And then if it's correct, it'll take a second, but it will just shoot out like all of this information about the host PC. And that is about it. All right, another really, really good presentation. Um, thank you for that. I actually, whoever was working on Tor, I gave you the hardest job because you actually had to go in and do a bunch of different Linux commands and then set up this service and figure out how it works. But a quick recap of what was said. I'm obviously not going to talk about how Tor works because that was already talked about. Um, but essentially, sometimes you want to browse the internet anonymously without people being able to see what sites you're visiting. Um, that's one aspect of Tor. And then the other aspect of Tor is being able to host websites uh, anonymously so that nobody knows where you're located or what your IP address is. You, it's just a service somewhere on the internet that people can connect to. Um, now, how would attackers use that? Well, attackers would use that, for example, for ransomware, which is what the other team, well, I guess a lot of you are on it, but the, uh, the other team that will be working on ransomware um, it encrypts the files on a target person's machine. And then the only way that they can get them decrypted is by paying an attacker to decrypt the files for them. But how are you going to get the files back and forth between the attacker and the target without the attacker's anonymity being compromised? That's where they use the Tor network because all connections will remain completely anonymous to both parties. So um, that's... What uh, Mitchell just showed you was how to set up a hidden service on Tor. So that's a service that anybody can connect to from anywhere on the internet, but they can't actually see who they're connecting to. So if anybody has questions about that, um, feel free to ask. Also, Tor is, if you've ever heard of the hidden web or the dark web, but that would be the Tor network. Uh, because a lot of people who do illegal things, they will host their sites on this Tor network uh, because then nobody can trace them. Uh, they're just out there somewhere. And so if you actually go and tr try to browse around the Tor network, which you can't actually search anything on it, but you can go to uh, wiki sites that will, will redirect you to other places, um, you'll see a lot of illegal things like selling drugs or selling weapons or things like that. So. A dangerous place, but um, attackers use it towards their advantage. And here we're learning how to uh, how to set something like that up. Of course, it's not just attackers that use it. There are plenty of companies that need to do things anonymously over the internet, uh, and they don't they don't want a third party coming in and figuring out what they're doing or seeing seeing who's connecting to whom. And in that case, Tor is also a good way to go. And there are a lot of there are a lot of plenty of legitimate businesses that also use Tor. Yeah.